Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect, and today we're gonna break down the process of creating realistic cash lights in Photoshop in three simple steps. So, what are those steps? We're gonna discuss it today. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download the sample photos and follow along, check the links in the description. So what is the first step? The first step is finding an eye with catch lights that match. What does that mean? Well, it again breaks down into three elements. Number one thing is, what is the source of light? Is it the sun or is it a softbox? So as you can see in this case, it looks like a studio shot and it is a studio shot. So possibility is it can be a softbox, it can be an umbrella. Right? So we will go for a soft box. Why does that matter? It matters because the shape of the source of light will be the shape on the eye. So for example, if you have a soft box as a source, the catch light will be square or rectangle or in that shape. So the shape matters. The second thing that we need to worry about is how many lights are there. As you can see in this shot, light seems to be coming from just one direction. The other side might be a reflector. So there will be just one catch light here. If there were two lights, one from this side, one from, one from that side, one from the bottom, well, there might be more than one. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that. So I searched for stock photos for the perfect catch lights that would match these criteria, and found this one. And this matched right in because there's just one catch light. Also, it's a soft box. So it just looked perfect. Now the third element to the first step is just make sure that you can separate this catch light. And how can you make sure that it separates? You can create a levels adjustment layer just to see whether that separates or not. Take this lighter from the left to the right. As you can see, it easily separates it. On a black background, white one, separatable, or whatever you want to call it. So, three things. Number one, keep in mind the source of light. Number two, how many lights are there? Number three, can you separate it? The second step is placing the catch lights. Now, when you place the catch lights, again, you have to keep three things in mind. Number one, what is the direction of light? So let's move into Photoshop and let me show that to you what it actually means. So here we are back in Photoshop again and all we need to do with the help of the lasso tool, just let's make a selection right here. Copy it, press Ctrl or Command C. Get back to this document, press Ctrl or Command V. Let's place it right there, okay? Just place it here for now and let me explain the direction of light. So what is the direction of light in this photo? Where is the light coming from? Let me show that to you. So in this photo, the light is probably coming from this direction. So where will the catch light be? The catch light will be here, not here. If the light was coming from that direction, it might have been this side. So common sense, it's very obvious, catch light will be there. The second thing we have to keep in mind is how close the light is. If the light is closer, the catch light will be bigger. If the light is further, the catch light will be smaller. So the light doesn't seem very far away. So the catch light will be a little bit medium sized. And the third thing that we have to keep in mind is the sharpness. When we zoom in, as you can see, the catch light is very sharp, but the eyes and all the other details are not that sharp. If we don't adjust catch light for sharpness, it will give the viewer a direct sign that, hey, this was added later. So keeping in mind the direction, we might have to flip it because it's an opposite direction in here, right? As you can see, the light is from the left hand side. Let's get back to this document. Let's just delete this arrow that I created. Okay, Control or Command D, right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. Now it's flipped, you can just place it right there, adjust it just like this, adjust it, and you can make it bigger if you want to. I'm gonna keep it at that, it looks pretty good. Now we just wanna show the lights, not all the other details here. What is the blend mode which brightens stuff? Screen. And what is the blend mode which deletes the blacks? Screen. So let's go ahead and change the blend mode to screen. It looks pretty good, but there are some details which are coming up. Simple, to remove it, all we need to do, we need to create a levels adjustment layer and make the darks darker, make it totally black so that it deletes. So if we do that, the image also becomes darker. So we need to create a clipping mask. 
Click on this button, it creates a clipping mask and limits the levels just to layer one, which is the catch light. Now we need to take it to the left, see? It's going away. Isn't that so awesome? All right, this seems to be all right. I think I need to erase this area. Let's just turn it off and on. No, this is a part of the subject. Have a look how realistic this looks. So this is the before and this is the after. So much more better. Now, as you can see, it's very sharp and these areas are not that sharp. You might have to blur it just a little bit. So select this and go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Not too much blur, just a little bit of blur will go a long way. 0 0.4, 0 0.8 is too much. Let's go 0 0.4, hit okay. Now we have adjusted this for sharpness. Now if you want, you can also decrease the opacity, just like so. But I guess opacity of 93 is good for this. Let's move on to step number three. Step number three is adding highlights and details. Just adding the catch light is not enough. And here's why. Let us get back to Photoshop and let's understand this first. So I'm gonna create a white layer, just like so. And this is just for understanding. So for example, this is your eye. Let's paint with black. Side view of your eye, right? All right. And here is the eyebrow and you get the idea. And here is the nose and the mouth and all that stuff. All right, so here is your eye, and this is your eyeball, okay? And this is the pupil, and this area is the iris, you know that. So the light enters from here, and here you see the catch light. Let me change the color to something that you can see, and here you see the catch light. Now when the light enters, it part of it enters this pupil, and goes to your retina where you can see, it also ends up hitting this area, adding shine over here. And then it gets back to your camera and camera sees the shine on the opposite area. So the catch lights enter from here, part of it goes inside and it also adds a little bit of shine over here, right? Let's go ahead and delete that. Now we need to add shine on the opposite side. So here we need to add some shine and details. So the first step is adding some details and then we'll add an overall shine. So for that, create a curves adjustment layer and I've covered this technique in depth in a previous video. It's a very important video that you can go ahead and watch right here, all right? So all we need to do, create a curves and then just zoom into the eye, increase it. Make a point in the middle, just increase it just like that. Then select the mask of the curves, press Control or Command I. Invert the mask. Take the brush. If you're using a tablet, I would suggest that you choose the soft round pressure opacity and flow. If you're using a mouse, the soft round brush with a decreased flow. So I'm gonna choose the soft round pressure opacity and flow. You can also create this brush if your Photoshop doesn't have it. Just keep the opacity and flow to pen pressure. All right, let's decrease the size. 11 is nice, no. Let's make it six-ish. Six is good. Make sure the hardness is zero. And flow, you can decrease the flow to somewhere around 15%, 14%. Let's make it 12%. Okay, I wrote something wrong there. 12 is great. Select the brush, foreground color white, and just start drawing the strands here with white. I think 12 is too less. Let's increase it. Keep in mind that we are adding details mostly in the opposite direction of the catch light. Right now we are adding details all over, but we'll make it more enhanced later. So just make strands like that and just increase it on the opposite side. You can add some random lines here and there. It looks pretty okay. Let's zoom out and have a look. So here is the before, here is the after with all the details. Now I might wanna increase it a little bit. Now, to make it even more prominent, it's kinda too much. Here's what we do. We only make it more visible on the opposite side. So put the curves inside a group. Press Control or Command G with the curve selected. Now, we have a group with just the curves inside it. 
Now we can have two masks for this. We have one mask here and we can have another mask for the group. So we can create a mask for the group right here. We can take a brush, make the brush a little bigger and remove it from the sides. Make the foreground color black. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and just erase it from the sides a little bit, not so much, just to make it more visible on the opposite side. Let's just collapse it and erase it just a little bit here and there. Now have a look, it looks much more natural. Here's the before, here's the after, so much more better. If you want, you can decrease the opacity. Now let's add one more shine and this is kind of overall. So create one more curves adjustment layer, drag it up just like that, just collapse it. And then select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and just make a dot here, make a dab. You can increase the flow if you want to on the opposite side, just like so. Okay, great. Now double click on the right hand side of the layer. If you want, you can take away the dark areas from this by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the slider to break it apart, to make it smooth. And you can do something like that. There we go. Here's the before, here's the after. Gives it much more dimension. Now I'm gonna make one more copy of this one. And in this copy, I don't wanna apply any blend if. Double click on the right hand side, and I wanna bring it back to normal. Hit OK. And probably I'll just decrease the opacity here. It's just something I wanted to add extra. There we go. Have a look at the eye. This looks totally awesome. Now you can make a group of both of these curves if you want to, and then control it. Hold the control or command, select the other one, press control or command G, and then control the opacity of both the groups. There we go. Just like that. Or maybe I wanna increase the opacity to 100. I'll get back to this one. What was this one doing? Okay, or I'll just decrease the opacity of this one and probably increase the opacity of this one. And then control the opacity from here. There we go. I'm happy with somewhere around 65-ish and that's great for me. Have a look at the eye. This looks so amazing. Now let's make a group of all the highlights that we added. It's becoming a little confusing. So hold the control or command, select the other group as well. Just the highlights, not the catch lights. Press control or command G, all right? So we have the highlights right here and let's try making a copy of it and see what that does. It makes it even more awesome, right? So. We select both of these groups again, press Ctrl or Command G, create a massive group. Now decrease the opacity of this group. Looks really good. Okay, so we have a great eye right here. Now we don't have to work so much harder for this eye. All we can do, create a group of everything which is above the subject for the eye. So select the topmost one, hold the Shift key, select the bottommost one with the eye details, press Ctrl or Command G. And you can just double click here and name it I right. Okay. Make a copy of this. Press Ctrl or Command J. And now just let's move it to the left eye. Like that. There we go. Now we might have to make some adjustments here. Just place the details properly. Okay. I think we have to make some adjustments to the catch light. So for the catch lights, we might have to move it a little bit right here and make it a little smaller, okay? And probably delete it from this side. Bring it here, take the eraser, where is the eraser? There we go, make it a little harder, just like this, and probably erase it a little bit from here to add the shape of the nose right there, okay? Now it looks much more realistic. Now let's go over the details of this one, the right eye copy, which is the left eye, eye left, left there we go here are the details let's decrease the amount here there we go and you can move the details if you want to with the group and you can just move it with the arrow keys as well and there we go let's just zoom out and have a look at this totally awesome now let's just shut it and collapse it so here is the after and let me show you the before it's completely mind-boggling and here is the before hollow eyes, right? And once you add the cash light and the highlights, have a look at it. Totally, the eye pops out, not pops out. Um, don't search that on Google. Eye uh, becomes more interesting. 
So that's how to add realistic cash lights in Photoshop. All we need to remember are the three steps. Step number one, find an eye with cash lights that match. When it comes to matching, keep in mind the source of light. How many lights are there? And thirdly, can you separate it? Second step is placing it. When placing it, again, keep three things in mind. What is the direction of light? Direction matters because if the direction is on the right, you're gonna place the cache light right here. If the direction is on the left, place the cache light here and accordingly. Another thing is how close is the light? If the light is close to the subject, the cache light is gonna be bigger. If the light is further, the cache light is gonna be smaller. Also zoom in to check the sharpness. If the eyes of the subject are very sharp, you have to make the cache light sharp as well. If it's blurry and if the cache light is sharp, that's not gonna work. Third step is adding the highlights and the shine on the opposite side on the iris. And how can we do that? Very easy, create a curves adjustment layer. Make those lines in the mask. Create one more curves adjustment layer. Just add one blob right there, soft blob. <laughs> you get the idea. And you can just copy, increase the power, do whatever you want. Now, once you have one eye ready, just group it up, copy it, copy it over to the other eye. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video was helpful. And if this was, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so very much for watching. And I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so very much for your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Oh,